but that drove me crazy. But you think as a he's been shot, he's shot in the arm, shot in the leg. And then they came back and they said he's uh, he's dead. Do you want to stop that now? Welcome back to Music Mongoose. I've got a great story for you today. Shortly before his death, John Lennon recorded a secret message in a song for Ringo Starr. A message that when found years later, brought Ringo to tears. Now, when the Beatles broke up, the news was so massive that the Earth actually stopped rotating. Okay, it didn't, but it was a pretty big deal. The Fab Four, best friends from Liverpool, were breaking up over legal battles and business decisions and creative differences. It was a sad time. Of course, a full Beatles reunion sadly never took place, but the members would dip into each other's projects from time to time. John Lennon enlisted the help of his old buddy Ringo on a couple of songs from his Plastic Ono Band album, God and Mother. Ringo too would continue working with ex-Beatles on his solo endeavours. McCartney collaborated with him on his debut, Sentimental Journey, in 1970. And 1973's Ringo saw all three ex-Beatles collaborate with him. McCartney played synthesizer and piano on the track Six O'Clock, George Harrison lent a hand to pen the track Photograph, and Lennon would donate the song I'm the Greatest, playing piano and providing backing vocals. Harrison features on the track too, playing guitar. This track marks the only time that three former Beatles recorded together between the band's breakup in 1970 and Lennon's death in 1980. Lennon continued to work with Ringo for a few years, donating songs like Cooking in the Kitchen of Love for Ringo's fifth album, released in 1976. Again, all four ex-Beatles would collaborate on this project, and this would mark the final time that ever happened. And the birth of John Lennon's son, Sean, would change things. Lennon had won his fight to remain in America, and his priorities had now shifted. Lennon stepped away from the music industry. After 1975's Rock and Roll, he released no solo music for five years while caring for Sean. In 1980, Lennon decided it was about time to make a comeback with Double Fantasy, an album featuring a musical dialogue between Lennon and his wife Yoko Ono. And this album really stands as quite a significant triumph for Lennon in his later career. It rekindled a certain youthful Beatles energy, especially in tracks like Watching the Wheels and Clean Up Time. Around the same time, Lennon was working on songs to follow this album, songs that would eventually be posthumously released in 1984's Milk and Honey. On that album is the track Grow Old With Me, a song that was originally intended for the Double Fantasy album. It was the demo recording of this track that contained the secret message for Ringo Starr. We'll get onto that in a second. But first, where did this song come from? The song itself draws inspiration from two key sources. Robert Browning's poem, Rabbi Ben Ezra, and Yoko Ono's song, Let Me Count the Ways, itself inspired by Elizabeth Barrett Browning's Sonnet 43. John Lennon and Yoko Ono had long admired the Brownings, even jokingly considering themselves as reincarnations of them suggesting that they might be their modern-day counterparts. In the summer of 1980, Ono woke up with the melody for her track Let Me Count the Ways in her head and called Lennon, who was in Bermuda at the time, to share it. John Lennon loved the track, and Yoko Ono suggested that John should write a companion piece, inspired by Robert Browning. They even had an idea to represent themselves as the Brownings on the album cover for this project. Lennon requested a collection of Browning's works to be sent to him in Bermuda, but that same day, he was coincidentally inspired while watching a film on TV, which included the poem Rabbi Ben Ezra. Motivated by this coincidence, Lennon penned the song Grow Old With Me and played it for Yoko Ono over the phone. Musically, Grow Old With Me traces its roots back to a 1976 unreleased song by Lennon called Tennessee, inspired by Tennessee Williams, a streetcar named Desire to be precise. Over time, Tennessee evolved into another unreleased track, Howling at the Moon, and then into a song called Memories. Elements of these songs, including the opening chords and melody, eventually shaped Grow Old With Me. During his stay in Bermuda, Lennon revisited Memories adding new instrumentation and blending it with his other ongoing work. The song was initially written and demo recorded with an acoustic guitar accompaniment. Lennon's assistant had brought his Ovation guitar to the island a month earlier, and it's likely this guitar was used for the original demos. Back in New York, at the Dakota, John Lennon recorded the song with a piano and a rhythm box. 
Although it suits Lennon's crooning voice to a T, he initially thought this song would work well for one of Ringo's projects. It was a soft ballad intended in the vein of wedding standards. In a 2019 interview with BBC Six Music, Ringo Starr said this, I had no idea about this song. I bumped into Jack Douglas, producer of Double Fantasy this year, and he says, did you ever hear the cassette? I said, what cassette? He said, of John doing the songs, doing the demos in Bermuda. I said, no, never heard it. And so he says, well, I'll get it for you. So anyway, he had the cassettes and he downloaded it onto a CD for me. At the very beginning of this CD, John says, oh, that sounds like a good song for Richard Starkey. This would be great for you, Ringo. I still well up thinking about it. When Ringo finally heard this message 40 years after Lennon's death, he decided to do good by Lennon and recorded the track, releasing it in 2019. The track was fittingly produced by Jack Douglas and also features an iconic string section from Here Comes the Sun written by George Harrison. So in a way, it's the four of us, Ringo said about the track. He'd have loved it. The final cherry on the cake, the Lyric music video features Lennon's original handwritten lyrics, taken from Lennon's lyric sheet for the song which was dated July 5th, 1980, Fairyland Bermuda. Despite being recorded in 2019 by Ringo Starr, the track was apparently offered to the other surviving Beatles as early as 1994. In 1994, Yoko Ono gave Paul McCartney cassette containing demo recordings of four unfinished John Lennon songs, Grow Old With Me, Free as a Bird, Real Love, and Now and Then. During a visit to the Dakota building, Yoko Ono played Paul McCartney at least three of these tracks, including Grow Old With Me. There were rumors that McCartney, George Harrison, and Ringo Starr attempted to develop Grow Old With Me, similarly to the other Beatles reunion songs featured in the Beatles anthology project. However, some sources dispute this. Jeff Lynne, for example, who produced Free as a Bird and Real Love, told Beatlefan in 1995 that the surviving Beatles worked on three tracks, explicitly stating that Grow Old With Me was not one of them. In that same issue of Beatlefan, Paul McCartney confirmed that Grow Old With Me was indeed shown to him by Yoko Ono, but that the surviving Beatles had no plans of recording it because they were not keen on that one, as he put it. It's also reported that George Harrison rejected the song, in 2005, Rip Rense wrote that the song was rumored to be too poignant to handle, and later noted that Harrison found it too sad, given Lennon's fate. In a 2012 documentary about Jeff Lynne, McCartney reconfirmed their preference for three songs, Free as a Bird, Real Love, and another they started working on, which eventually became Now and Then. Ringo Starr, who of course eventually recorded the song and released it in 2019, insisted that he only learned about its existence in that year. Despite this apparent lapse in memory, it further suggests that the surviving Beatles did not work on Grow Old With Me in the 90s. Despite all of that, the song remains pretty special for Ringo Starr. I love the song, Ringo said to BBC Six Music. It's very romantic, and so it's probably, I'm guessing, written for John and Yoko. And so I put my piece on it, and it's to Barbara. I think every bride should make their nearly husband sing it to her. I want it to become like the wedding song of the century, he said. And I think that Ringo Starr's rendition of Grow Old With Me is particularly poignant, because it symbolizes this dream that John Lennon had for himself and Yoko Ono growing old with the person you love. His murder, of course, prevented that from ever happening. But Ringo is still able to live out that idyllic dream with his wife, Barbara, making the song and its significance all the more special. Now, by the time of John Lennon's death, he and George Harrison had sadly become all but estranged. But did you know, in 1969, Lennon and Harrison had a fist fight? It was hushed up to avoid bad press. You can click over here to watch the video on that next.